Welcome to the Urology Care Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Mohal. We're going to be talking about low testosterone. Dr. Mohal, why don't you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, my name is John Mulhall. I'm a urologist, and I am the director of sexual and reproductive medicine at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City, and I have a practice that's devoted to men with sexual problems or fertility problems and uh, low testosterone. Just start with the absolute basics. What is testosterone? Testosterone is a hormone, 95% of which is produced by the testicles. The other 5% is produced by the adrenal gland. And testosterone is a vitally important hormone for sexual and non-sexual uh, functions in the body. It's a hormone that's very difficult for us to live without. So, for example, men who are on uh, hormone therapy for prostate cancer are on medications which cause testosterone to go to zero. And those patients are uh, suffering from often very significant side effects. But what about a woman? Should there be any capacity when a woman would be concerned about testosterone levels? So testosterone is a important hormone for um, sex drive yeah, for both men and women. Uh, testosterone in women comes from the adrenal glands, but also from the ovaries. And when women go through menopause, they lose somewhere in the range of 50 to 60% of their testosterone production. And so many postmenopausal women experience a significant reduction in their sex drive as a result of that. Okay. And what causes low levels of testosterone? So broadly speaking, uh, low testosterone levels are associated with uh, two general groups of causes. Um, uh, first of all, given the fact that 95% of testosterone comes from the testes, uh, anything that causes uh, testicular dysfunction uh, can lead to that. For example, testis cancer with the removal of uh, testis, um, chemotherapy, uh, radiation to the testes, any infection uh, of the testes can cause problems. The other group of causes are uh, called central causes, where the pituitary gland in the brain called, produces a hormone called luteinizing hormone, which travels to the testis and allows the testis to generate testosterone. When the pituitary gland is not functioning or there is an abnormality in the pituitary gland, then there may not be enough a luteinizing hormone traveling to the testis, and that will cause a inability to produce enough testosterone. Are there any signs or symptoms that a man would, would have if they had low testosterone? So let's talk about the symptoms first, the things that the patient would complain about. Uh, symptoms such as uh, low general energy, afternoon fatigue, decreased strength, decreased endurance, losing muscle, putting on weight, particularly around the belly, so we call that central obesity, uh, irritability, Depressive symptoms. Sometimes men have uh, erection problems and they often have problems with uh, their sex drive. Uh, there are other signs such as anemia. So men with unexplained anemia sometimes have low testosterone. What is anemia? A low uh, blood count, so okay. low hemoglobin or hematocrit level. Okay. And then some men who have uh, bone density loss, uh, osteoporosis, of course, which is well known to everybody. And, well, the stage before that called osteopenia or low trauma bone fractures. So men who are stepping off a curb and twist their ankles very gingerly and they fracture their, their ankle. Uh, low trauma may be associated with osteoporosis and some of those men have, have low testosterone. Low testosterone is uh, associated with uh, a number of medical conditions. So for example, we know that patients exposed to chemotherapy are at higher risk of low testosterone. Uh, men who have diabetes are at higher risk of low testosterone. Men who've lost a testicle or have had mumps of their testes. Any chronic illness uh, can cause uh, a low testosterone. So somebody who is chronically ill, um, even patients such as those with rheumatoid arthritis or COPD uh, can have uh, low testosterone. Uh, so there are a variety of medical conditions that we know are associated uh, with low testosterone. And those patients, we typically encourage to get a testosterone blood test done. Okay, and that's the main way that low testosterone is diagnosed? Yeah. So generally speaking, there are um, uh, different types of testosterone, but the blood test that's most commonly used as a kind of a, a first step in the evaluation is measuring a total testosterone level, which is simply a blood test, which uh, is generally speaking done in the morning. And uh, for most of the experts uh, ordering the test, it'll be done before 10 o'clock in the morning. You don't typically have to fast. 
And if that level is low, then we'll typically repeat that test because there is a variability from one testosterone level to another. Um, we typically try to do that at the same laboratory so we can compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. And then usually when we repeat that testosterone level, it's done in conjunction with some other blood tests, including hormone levels like the LH, the luteinizing hormone level, that pituitary hormone we talked about earlier on. So there's a very structured uh, blood test uh, system that we put patients through when we're concerned they might have low testosterone. Once someone is diagnosed, how is it treated? There are a number of ways to give testosterone. There is direct testosterone therapy, which is either using uh, predominantly gels or creams, intramuscular testosterone shots, or subcutaneous pellets, which go under the skin in a very minor uh, surgical office procedure. There's also indirect testosterone therapy where we can give men medications that boost their natural testosterone production uh, without giving them testosterone. Now, these are men. The latter group have to have, generally speaking, an LH level on the low end of normal. And they're the patients who appear to be most responsive to hormones or drugs, excuse me, such as clomiphene, which is a pill, or HCG, which is an injection. Very importantly, for men of whatever age, who are interested in conceiving currently or in the near future, giving those men testosterone directly, whether it's a gel, an injection, or a pellet, is going to turn off sperm production completely within a few months. So those patients should not take testosterone. And these are the men who are classically candidates for pills like clomiphene or for the injectable HCG. But in the general patient who's got low testosterone level, who's older, who's not interested in fertility, then uh, using testosterone directly is a very good way uh, to start. Going back to the blood test, it's not just having a low testosterone level. It's having a low testosterone level in conjunction with those symptoms or signs that we discussed earlier on. First-line therapy is typically using a gel. There are now seven gels, some of which are generic. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are two agents we use uh, for short-term injectable testosterone. And then there's one agent that is injected into the muscle, either the leg or the butt, and that lasts uh, around 10 weeks. And then, of course, there are the pellets, which is done in an office procedure. So we have a number of different strategies that patients can use, and which of those strategies the patient opts for is a bit of a negotiated decision and often boils down to things such as what's covered by your insurance company, uh, whether you're needle phobic or not, and what your lifestyle is. We have men who say, listen, I can't wrap my mind around the idea of applying a gel to my body every day when I can take an injection once a week or I can take these subcutaneous pellets every three months. So it's very personal. Um, one of the other potential concerns with gels is the concept called transference. Transference is uh, a man should not have direct skin-to-skin -skin contact with a woman or a child for several hours after applying the gel because absorption of testosterone by those other people may be potentially harmful. And so if a young man comes in who's got low testosterone and he has a toddler at home who's always jumping up on him as his dad or her dad, then perhaps gels may not be the best option for that patient. And what could patients expect after treatment? Um, how will they know it's working or what will they feel differently? So what we typically do, of course, is a few weeks after starting on the testosterone treatment, no matter what the, uh, the modality is, we would uh, recommend getting repeat blood work. And that repeat blood work would be to measure the testosterone level. And uh, typically, we're looking for a symptomatic response that is improvement in sex drive or improvement in energy or, or mood or strength or endurance, sometimes improvement in work productivity or improvement in ability to respond to working out. That can take somewhere in the range of two to three months before we really know if the testosterone is really working or not. Typically, what we do at that point in time is to bring the patient back and have a discussion about what is their new testosterone level on the testosterone supplement, and then what are their symptoms. And then we base a decision about whether we're going to continue this in the long term or not. What if um, low testosterone goes untreated? What would be the risks for the man there? So low testosterone, particularly at very low levels, so if I can give you some general ballpark ranges. So uh, the typical range would be in most laboratories for total testosterone of somewhere between 3 and 800. Now, that's a very wide range. And of course, we often get men coming to see us who are 60 years of age and they've got a testosterone level of 300, low. But we don't know what their testosterone level was 20 years ago. So uh, that change over time may be very important in whether the patient should get testosterone or whether they will respond. So typically, if 
the levels are very low, we're talking levels typically below 250 or below 200, those patients are at risk for three major medical problems. One is the development of osteoporosis, or the stage preceding that called osteopenia, the development of type 2 diabetes, or the development of premature cardiovascular events, such as heart attacks and strokes. So, for men who have untreated, very low testosterone levels, this has some very significant uh, healthcare implications. Going back to what you just said, would it be beneficial for a patient to ever, um, maybe in their younger years, get a baseline low or a baseline testosterone level just on record? Would that be helpful? So that's a very interesting question, and and the general recommendations from the. Uh, medical societies, including the American Urological Association, would be that there is no known benefit for screening men for low testosterone at young age. Got it. And just to talk a little bit about people who take testosterone therapy for non-medical reasons, perhaps bodybuilding or something of that nature, did you have any thoughts on that? Right. So, uh, first of all, there are men who obtain testosterone through um, illicit channels at their gym, etc., etc., And some of them think they're using testosterone when in fact what they're using are called anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are uh, designer drugs which are 10 to 100 times more likely to produce muscle than regular testosterone is. And the problem with those, of course, is that when these men go on these drugs, that the testicles often shrink over time. Now, this is not something that occurs in the first several months, but with repeated and chronic use of these medications, uh, men's testicles shrink, and in some of those men, those testicles never recover after the man stops the anabolic steroids. And then, of course, that has left him in a state where he needs, for the rest of his life, testosterone supplementation, and will render him potentially permanently infertile. Any other final thoughts before we wrap up here? Uh, I think that uh, if you have symptoms that we outlined earlier on, it would not be unreasonable for you to speak to your doctor to get an early morning total testosterone level check. That level is checked, we would repeat it. And if you have symptoms consistent with low testosterone and two low te total testosterone levels, then a discussion should be held with you about the pros and cons and risks and benefits of testosterone supplementation. I want to thank my guest today, Dr. Mohal, and if you'd like more information on low testosterone, visit urologyhealth.org slash low testosterone. And thanks, Dr. Mohal. Any other parting words for us? It's my pleasure. All right. Thank you. This podcast has been brought to you by the Urology Care Foundation, the official foundation of the American Urological Association.